I called him up. Uh, he was coming into town out of San Francisco, and I said, hey, please, man, I want you to do this show because uh, you're going to have fun, and uh, you're going to like these people, and I'm sure your response is going to be the same to him. He's a wacko. He's a little bit different. I know you're going to enjoy him. Please, a nice round of applause for Mr. Tom Kenny. <laughs> All right. You guys seem happy. I'm happy I just got back from Supercuts. I'm a happy guy. You can't go wrong. You know, eight bucks, I'm a sucker for a value. <laughs> I got the six dollar Supercut. That's how they give an epileptic some garden shears. You know, hey, go crazy, Junior. You want to see the back? No! No, Sparato, no! I'd like to look like a cockatiel from Woolworths, please. Okay, but you'll have to go home in this cardboard box with the holes in the side. Anything, mister? <laughs> Uh, this is great. I've been playing towns down south, so like to play in front of a real audience is great, you know, because the comedy clubs down south are always packed, but there's acres and acres of people and everyone is wearing a tractor cap, you know, and that's us it's usually not a sign of high intelligence. You'll never see a photograph of Marie Curie wearing a tractor cap, splitting atoms, you know, Harley's the best, screw the rest, you're never going to see that. You know? <laughs> Albert Einstein, fishermen go deeper. <laughs> real funny, Al, here, use my comb, you know. <laughs> Drinking the Perrier tonight, kind of a corporate plug. Mm. You think people that live in France buy little bottles of like really shitty Brookline tap water just for a treat? <laughs> Saturday night, woo! I'd like some poop and cigarette butts in there, please. <laughs> but no fluoride, mm-mm. This is good, like I said. After being down south, this is a big relief. <laughs> I know I'm getting further and further out of a real city when people start looking at me and saying to their friends, hey, Clem. You think if Kurt Rambis from the Lakers and Buddy Holly had a baby, it'd look like this guy? <laughs> yeah, let's kill him. <laughs> hey, fellas, why so cranky? <laughs> uh, I take the mic out of the stand. That's, I, I'm scared with all this equipment around, wires and stuff. You know, I, I'm not good with mechanical things. I don't have that kind of linear mechanical mind that like, if something is broken, I can focus in on the problem and see what's wrong and rectify it. You know, I, I was always calling my old man from a pay phone in the middle of nowhere, the lousiest, rainiest nights imaginable at 3 in the morning. You know, my, my dad being a real talkative kind of a Joe at 3 in the morning. Be having this conversation. I'm dead. Um, the car won't work. Well, will it turn over? Uh, yeah, it did, like three times. Slammed into an embankment, became a sheet of flame. Wicked road warrior-ness. Wicked road warrior-ness, pops. <laughs> it's having it by midnight. <laughs> you know, my dad never showed too much emotion. He's like, three parts Vulcan, two parts Ike Turner. That's my pop, you know. Had problems showing his emotion. I, my father was always going high and mighty on me. That co always caused problems. He always had it much tougher than I did. Oh, you think you've got it tough? Damn it, I grew up in the 30s and 40s, war and depression. It's like, Dad, take it easy. I grew up in the 70s, leisure suits and journey, which sucked the bag more, you know? <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> which sucked the bag more? That's a tough question. It's tough being a pop sometimes. Oh, have to consult the Hugh Beaumont dad book. You know? <laughs> uh. I was always, it's partly my fault, you know, I was always doing stuff to deliberately tick my dad off through 13 years of Catholic school. <laughs> They're real proud of this product here, you know. It's, it's like a big wanted poster with my face on it in the Vatican, you know. It's calling all cardinals, calling all cardinals. Woo! <laughs> yeah, 13 years of Catholic school, 13 years of having to show respect to these big square bull dyke nuns that all went to the convent on a wrestling scholarship, you know. It's, yipes! <laughs> <laughs> you have to be nice to these women. You have to stand up when they come in the classroom. Good morning, Sister Sumo. Yeah. Good morning, class. <laughs> She's got on a habit and this little butt, you know, this little towel creeping up her butt, you know. It's kind of a, just thought I'd take the Sumo analogy that much farther. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is great. I'm going to try and put this back in the stand. Although, like I said, I'm not good with mechanical things. Maybe that's why I don't like a lot of today's rock and roll. You know, they say it's rock and roll, but it's got drum machines on it and stuff. You know, rock and roll makes you feel good and it's organic and people make mistakes. You know, not like it's this scratch stuff. I'll never understand that. Drum machines, like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. if I want to hear that, I'll wear corduroy pants all the time. You know, that's just the way I feel. Trouser solo. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Hey, you're good. Here's something you've seen. Something you've seen in old movies from the 30s about a thousand times. Under the leg. Yeah. How many times has that happened? Something of earth-shaking importance happened spinning newspaper chasing you down the street. 
Marcos cheated, who knew, you know? <laughs> Ferdinand Marcos gets into the airport. Honey, have you seen my toothbrush and my gold bullion? God damn it, I hate it when I pack in a hurry. It just didn't walk away. <laughs> uh, saw this on the newsstand, so I hung on to it. This is the weirdest headline I've ever seen. <laughs> Ancient skull talks and sings. Yes. So rare to find one that can do both. <laughs> one or the other, maybe. <laughs> Ah, this is great. You're saying, here's a guy with too much time on his hands. <laughs> That's true. I did. I, 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 I uh, bought a VCR recently because I wanted to take up some of that extra time. That's pretty weird. The first couple weeks you own a VCR, you'll tape anything just because you can. You know? <gasps> Quick, honey, push the record. Dana Hersey's on the movie loft. Put your hand in. Put it on. You know? Dana Hersey. Put it on. We're missing it. <laughs> it's weird because my girlfriend and I have been going out for five, count them, five years. I thought we had a lot in common taste-wise, you know, but... Nowadays, you know, we, we, this VCR comes into the house. We go into the video store. She's over at this side going, Killing Fields. Killing Fields is supposed to be really good. Really sad. Really sad, but really good. Really, 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 really sad, but really good. I'm over here going, Killing Fields, Schmilling Fields. Godzilla versus Megalon looks good to me. We're taking it home, you know. Like, All right, we'll watch Godzilla again. Asshole. You know. Not good, not good. <laughs> I, I, I had a super macho weekend. The, I, 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 movies that you wouldn't pay a quarter to see, you'll rent them. You know, I, I rented Rambo and First Blood on the same weekend. That was pretty scary. You know, I wouldn't rent Rambo because Reagan thought it was great when it first came out. That scared the living shit out of me. That was pretty scary. Why couldn't he like something healthy? You know, the Care Bear, Smurfs and the Magic Flute. No, he has to like Rambo. You know? It's kind of a spooky thing. First Blood is a weird movie. Did you see First Blood? That, that's, that's weird. It's, because the first hour and a half, things blowing up, violence, you know, everything you would expect. And, and, then, and, and then at the end, Rambo has this breakdown, and he feels really sad for all the destruction he's causing. He's trying so hard to act, you know, which makes it even sadder. He's trying so hard to act. To me, it sounded like he was just doing a really lousy impression of Astro from the Jetsons, you know. Right at Rinder Ruro Ruddy! Right at Rinder Ruro Ruddy! Right at Rinder Ruro Ruddy! Like, okay, Astro, you didn't mean to hurt nobody. Get in the car. There I go. <laughs> Watch too many cartoons as a kid. That comes out in my adult life. Because nowadays when I think a girl is attractive, I do this kind of stuff. <gasps> you know, try getting a girl to go home with you after that, you know. He's annoying! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm from, originally from upstate New York. That's a, I hadn't been home for Christmas for, for like two years. I decided to finally go home, go home for Christmas. And that was kind of sad because I wanted to buy everybody in my family that perfect Christmas gift, just suited to their individual character. I ended up buying like 90 Hickory Farms cheese boards. That's enough. <laughs> they like sausage. I don't give a shit. Anyways, my mom... Let me show this to you. My mom, who lives there in Syracuse, New York, and knits as a hobby, Christmas Eve comes around... My mom gives me this. It's like, Mom, either you're really hip or you've lost your mind. I don't know which, you know. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it, according to my mom and Salvador Dali, it's a cow. I don't know about anyone else. It'll go with that melted wristwatch. You'll love it, you know. <laughs> Not only is it a hideous shade of pink, it's got a cow on it, and that's a problem. You know? <laughs> Maybe I'm paranoid, but I feel kind of vulnerable wearing this thing into a tough biker bar. Maybe it's just me. You know? <laughs> After a while, the glasses aren't enough protection. You know? These aren't even really glasses. My eyes just suck so bad. I went in for contacts, and the guy said, hey, these are going to be kind of big. What do you say we mount them in plastic frames for you for free? <laughs> Jeepers, thanks, mister. You're swell. Hurried off, cock of the walk, happy as a clam. That was me. Anyways... Yeah, I don't know. You wear this into a biker bar, you're taking your life in your hands. Those hell's angels start closing in on you. There's not an exit in sight. you got to bluff. And a lot of times, you know, I'm bluffing. How is that going to work? It's like... <laughs> Cowman! <laughs> Bitten by a radioactive cow. I gained the proportionate strength of a cow and became Cowman. So don't mess with me, you big, mean, hog-riding, hell's angels, peckerhead guy, because I'm Cowman, all right? Like, read behind, between the lines, duh. Yeah. <laughs> They're really scared by that time. Get out of here, Muggsy! It's Cowman! You, know, you can't escape, Cowman. Tss, 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 milk slick, arg, oof. The many powers of Cowman. Cowman, what's this at 8 on CBS? <laughs> Thanks. That's dumb enough to be a pilot. I don't know. It's, I, get the feel, I get the feeling that if the Ponderosa was in a really gay neighborhood, everybody would be wearing these. You know, I said, Hoss, I'll make you forget all about that Jersey hosting on the North 40. Jeepers, really? You bet. You know, <laughs> I can never watch the Ponderosa Bonanza because Lauren Green is like one of those guys. He, he, he's, uh, you know, let, let's call a spade a spade. And Lauren Green is a pud, you know. And I mean, he's the biggest liar on TV. You always see the guy on there saying, you know, beef is your dog's natural food. 
It's like natural food, yellorn. I know I get kind of misty every time I see a pack of chihuahuas tear down a Texas longhorn out in the wild. You're lying to me, Lorne, and your side burns way more than I do. That's pretty scary. Go back to Battlestar Ponderosa, you big fat liar head. Nobody wants you here. Anyway, you guys have been tremendous. So if you're going to be drinking and driving tonight, use somebody else's car. Thanks a lot. I'm Tom Kenny. Back to Mike McDonald. That's the cowman, Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny. The golden Palomino himself.